A little wind this is blowing the smoke around, but you can see how smoky it is. Uh, it's kicking now. That's what you're looking for. There's the venturi effect in full. You see how it's making a tower? If we had spread that apart a little bit better on that top shelf, that we'd have had this in a couple seconds. So. What? Don't pack yeah. the top shelf too tight, guys. You want to make sure you got plenty of space between. Yeah, it's not so much the greenery that's the problem as it is that top, that second shelf. You don't want those sticks like this. You want them more like this. You want it open to where that fire can get in there to burn that. You don't want it to have to burn the sticks to get to the, the greenery. Bottom shelf, you want as tight as possible because that fire is going to burn some of that stuff. So, yeah, back over top is open. Heck, I've done, I've thrown two X's in there before. I'll we'll show you one last look there. She's still going strong. It's probably been 15, 20 minutes. See how that smoke's turning yellow under here? That's the possum hide. It's taint okay, too, boys. Yeah, what we're going to talk about is the steps in doing this. Let's say that we just took that possum hide off the critter. Uh, we have a fleshing beam. And this fleshing beam was just one main beam that we brought up. We found two uh, about four foot long logs that are pretty substantial. Make sure they're not rotten like, like I did. I found a log, but it's too rotten and it broke apart. It's got to be able to hold and withstand the weight of that uh, log, the fleshing log or beam itself. And all I did was is I did a simple uh, lashing on it, crossed it, and I pulled a stake down with 550 cord to give it some tension on one side, laid the log on there, lashed it together again, and pinned it on the flesher's side just so it's really stable. Um, this way, if you had a tripod holding this that we've done in the past, we don't have that extra leg that's flopping around, could be in your way, you're stepping over. This way you just have two logs that are out of your way and just one line uh, directly in between your feet that you're not really going to hit anyway because the beam is out past it. That's the thinking or the engineering behind this, this, this setup. What he's going to do right now is he's pulling the flesh or the hide, hair side down, flesh side up, uh, the, uh, I guess it's the internal side of the skin or the flesh side up and he's going to proceed to scrape this hide down. Um, the fat on a raccoon is pretty greasy, pretty loose. Possum. Sorry, I may still keep saying raccoon. I, I don't know why that coon is on the brain. I'll also talk about how thin the hides are because it's touched us in the tour. Yeah, well, it also could be a knife too. Yeah. Possum's hides are very, very thin, okay? And the more you keep them submerged in water like it was in my cooler, the more apt it may, it, it may rip on you or pull apart. Um, it deteriorates very, very quickly, so you want to get on this very soon. Um, ideally, you probably should, I probably should have wrapped that up, hair side out, rolled it up, and just left it outside to dry in the elements, but the critters probably would have took it. Unless I secured it to a tree, up in a tree, or whatever, something could have carried this off, so what I did is I just throwed it in a bag in my cooler. What we're going to do is, um, the idea is to scrape off all the fat, flesh, in a uh, membrane down to one layer of hide. That's this. Yeah. I'm trying to be delicate. Yeah. Just, uh, what work for you? Get that down. I got another fleshing knife. Can you want to try that? Yeah, go ahead. I think that was too much? Yeah. Okay, yeah let me go get me another. Go ahead and talk if you want. I'll go get it. Right. He's going to get another knife, guys. And, this, and you have to do this. Age is kind sharp. of refined. Yeah, and you felt that a minute ago, and that's that's pretty well dull, but because it's just made for it's I, I skin coons with that, or uh, flesh coons with that rather. And well, if you if you notice, I'm just barely scraping it, and it did that. So, and that's what I said. You got to be very careful. So when I get into that gristle and more of that fat, then this will work real well. But yeah, we're gonna. He's gonna. Yeah, he's got that one. Basically, just a draw knife. A dull draw knife. Usually. 
scraping blades, commercial scraping blades and draw knives that are used for uh, woodworking and um, fleshing are sharpened on one side. So you have two options, pull, push, and it's pretty dull. But we don't want them too sharp. Some instances you need them sharp so you can actually do a slicing type motion to cut into some stuff that's really attached to that hide. Give it a quick slice, peel it up a little bit. When you get that little bit of meat or flesh or membrane peeled up, then do a push type motion cut. Push it off. What we're doing is wanting to push the hide, the fat, and the membrane off and start in one patch. Work one little patch and get it opened up so we have a flap of meat or flesh to work on and push that all the way down. Move to a little bit to the one side or another. Start some flesh, push that all the way down. And we want to continue that uh, process all the way around it, pushing past the edge of the fur onto the board. If you was in a situation where, just say you only had the one tool, if you got a 90 degree spine on your knife, could you use that? You, I used Dave's uh, PLSK-1 mm -hmm. at the Hudson Bay Trappers class, and it was fantastic. The length, it's a little bit longer than I usually like, but I tell you what, the length of the blade, I was able to hang on to it. It was a deep enough blade to actually get down and control it with my thumbs and handle, and it did It did a beaver, it did a possum, a coon, and something else. It was great. There you go. Yeah, we're See, somewhere. he's got this motion down. It took him a while to peel up uh, part of the hide, but it's, it's kind of coming apart on us in some areas where I might have slipped with the knife. Yeah, or we're pushing it, down too much. That's where you had to cut um, the parts. We're not taking this to uh, a fur seller or fur buyer. Um, what we're doing is actually tanning it ourselves. We're actually doing the process of brain tanning and preserving. Um, since I didn't want to open up that um, possum because it was smelling worse on the outside than it was possibly on the inside, I didn't want to even deal with it because I didn't think we needed to deal with it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to show you how he's working it through it so thin that you're actually going to see the bottom of the hair follicles coming up through. And possum are notorious for that because the hides are extremely thin. They're actually kind of hard to, with the brain tan because the hair slips. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, it, they're actually a quicker animal to tan because it's so thin it doesn't take long for the, the tanning liquor that we're going to make to absorb into it. But on the other hand, it's really, really hard to process without making a rip. This is a low dollar animal, people. There's possums everywhere. It's only like a buck and a quarter yeah. in the round. For, if, you, for if, perfect. if you actually uh, sell it in the green and make no cuts in it, you can maybe make a quarter or 50 cents more. If you want to take the hide off it, flesh it, scrape it and dry it hard like this with no type of preservatives on it. This is just raw hide, just dried hide with all the membrane meat and fat scraped off of it. It, you know, you may get a dollar more for it. Is your time going to be worth that extra dollar to make sure all this is perfect? Could be if you have a whole bunch of possums. It's up to you. But for this instance, we're actually going to try and scrape this clean and go through the uh, brain tanning process to make a pouch, a piece of leather, a flap, whatever. You know what I mean? This will be for practice. If you can start skinning out possum hides without ripping and tearing and pulling through hair, you're doing really good. Yeah, you've got a lot of possums. Really good. <laughs> he's, he's been working at this for about 10, 12 minutes. And he's got almost half of it done. And this is, it's got a couple things going on wrong for him right now that's working against him. One, it's small, it's young, the height is really thin. Two, it's a female. It has multiple layers of skin that's really uh, small and thin membrane like right, right for its pouch. The marsupial pouch. And uh, it has a thing, you know, it has, it's a female, so it actually has exposed, exposed nipples or the inside part of the nipple flaps. And those are candidates, after it's off the body, it gets hard. And those hard spots of skin that's on the nipples on the inside are points where that blade will catch, and it's a thing called nipple rip on the hide. That blade, when you're pushing that flesh off, you can come across a hard piece of hide, hard piece of membrane, something that clogged up, whatever, that hard inside nipple membrane. You catch that dollar store hand soap, degreaser, Dawn dish soap, whatever you have at the time. We want to get that grease, greasy feeling, stench, uh, excrement, everything off that hide. So we're 